Hi everybody, welcome to our lecture for chapter two in the DeFore textbook. Um, just, as a, just as a heads up, it is a little dark in here tonight. Um, the lighting is really bad, so you won't get to see me that much, but uh, you'll still get some of the main ideas that we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, as I said before, we're going to transition now into the idea behind the professional learning community process. So a lot of these ideas are big ideas that I think you can take with you and use as you further to develop your experience with professional learning communities. So making sure that comes out good. Yeah, that seems to be looking good on there. Um, so the role of the school district, um, you have to understand that in, in a professional learning community, even though it's centralized at central administration, I don't think that's where the most important positioning is. The most important person in a professional learning community that makes the professional learning community work is the building principal, bar none. Um, the building principal has to be the one that's engaged with it, has to be engaged with, your, with the teaching staff that is running the professional learning community, um, and they also have to be able to specifically relate the goals to the building. Um, think about the ideas of you know some of the schools that you'll work in. If there's two or three elementary schools in the district, or in some cases 15 or 20, and you have a much larger elementary school or a much smaller community-based school, what is the professional learning community going to look like? Is it going to be different in the smaller school? Well, I would argue yes. So think about that and realize that even though the model might be in place to benefit the district, the professional learning community really is in the hand of the building principal more than anybody else. So in education right now, when we're talking about the building principal having autonomy, the concept this ties to is called site-based management. This is a hot button issue right now in education. Um, it gives full autonomy to the building principal to make the decisions that they want to make. Um, they get final say over any management, over any instructional goals, and that can be, um, that can be a tremendous challenge, I, I, I tell you that for sure. Um, because then they have to make sure that they're doing what the district wants as well. They have to make sure that they're doing what's in the best interest of stakeholders that are new to the building, not just people that have been there for a long time. Um, but right now in our research literature, we truly believe that professional learning communities work better under a site-based management system. So district vision and mission matters if you're thinking about the professional learning community. Um, the, the notion is um, you have to have the big ideas. Um, you have to make sure that the overarching vision is used by each of the buildings and it's at least accepted and recognized as appropriate. Um, one of the main things that people say against district-led professional learning communities is that teacher turnover is very common. Um, they'll, go to, they'll go to different buildings. So even if a teacher goes from one elementary school to another, they're still in the district. So it's imperative that even though they're in the, in, even though they're in the district and they're in the professional learning community, um, they still should know what the model looks like and how it looks like in other buildings. It's a big argument and a big idea of this concept. So Marzano, we all know for teacher evaluation, but he's also started to look at district leadership and the effect that it's had on student achievement. Um, it's related to vision and mission, but it's basically stating that in order for student achievement to be, to improve, the district has to have a clear vision and clear targets in order to reach those goals, very similar to what Fullen had said. So an effective district leader will empower, but they'll direct as well, meaning that that building principle is who gets empowered. And in site-based school improvement, the building principle has autonomy and they're given freedom. So they have the freedom to assess that as they want do with it what they want, and then use it to better their building, their school, and essentially their organization. That is what site-based school improvement was built off of, what it means, and what it stands for. So Sharon Cruz um, is at the University of Washington. She looked at this concept of site-based management and why it didn't transfer to other buildings. She found that when schools improved, they didn't share knowledge to say why, why they improved. Um, different schools were free to ignore evidence of more effective practices in other schools, ba basically meaning that even though they had the autonomy, they didn't share that information with each other. So I think that's an important finding. I love Sharon Cruz. She's one of my absolute favorite people um, to read and to, and, and to study, and she's done a lot with organizational learning that I think you'll find very interesting. So one of the things that you then have to do is share and compare. Um, you have to 
see what the building principles are doing, you give them autonomy, but then you have to compare what they're doing from building to building to building. Um, one of the key ideas behind this is it gives you the opportunity for a district level, but the district level is targeted and it's focused on what the principals are doing, what has went right and what has went wrong. That way if there is this teacher turnover and this teacher transition, it will at least make sense to the new people that are coming into the building. So one of the next reform efforts led to top-down directors from central administration. This was not successful at all because then we took the autonomy back off of the building principles um, in we currently see this in a lot of our school systems. Building principals are trapped in the middle between the superintendent and also between the, the, the teacher level and making sure they're handling the stakeholders and constituents there. So one of the ideas that we're looking at currently in that admin research is giving building principals back their autonomy and giving them their ticket to practice appropriately. But in a professional learning community, the building principal has to be the do all and end all. And if that doesn't happen, then we have a problem. So Marzano's non-teacher evaluation work says that the superintendent should work with everybody to get a clear vision. Every single stakeholder should be addressed and the principals have to be treated equal to other central administration members. Ask yourself this if you are in a bigger district. Is the principal treated equal to the people in central administration? Difficult time talking about this in Oklahoma because we have so many school districts here and those of you that are in smaller districts some of you, the, you're, you're the principal and you are considered a central administrator, but in your bigger districts, are the principals treated like central administration? And I think that's a big idea and I think it's something that you have to consider. So, the person that makes this vision work more than anything else is the assistant superintendent. Um, the larger school districts, the assistant superintendent is normally responsible for this curricular mindset and this curricular model, and they're the ones that are going to take on the leadership role in the professional learning community and also make sure that the principals get the appropriate professional development. I mentioned that the superintendent can't do everything, and I think that's important to say. This is why the assistant superintendent is there, the assistant superintendent exists, in order to give that principal that level of autonomy that they need. So. The Fairfax County Public Schools model of professional learning communities I think is important to look at because this is a big and very, very, very large system. You know, every single year Fairfax County is hiring teachers. So their model gives the building principal autonomy, but it also makes sure that everybody in the district is on the same page. So I think this is a good model and I think it's a good idea and I think we should look at it. So we're going to look at each part of them and see how they're awarded in terms of professional learning. So you can take a minute and read that on your own, and you can call this up on the PowerPoint, so I'll give you about uh, 30 seconds to read over this. So that's learning is our fundamental purpose. Try to think about the big ideas you got here. We're going to discuss them in a little bit. Here's the collaborative culture through the whole teaming process. So take about 20, 25 seconds and look over this one. And finally, we take a look at results. I'll give you about um, 20, 25 seconds to look at this one as well.
Okay, so you can read on your own, but what I want you to see is the fact that there were a few big consistent ideas. The initial stuff that talked about vision was consistent and it said it had to happen across the district, but it still gave it to each building to implement that vision. Everything is tied to achievement. They used the term smart and smart goals and everything really yielded that we have to be doing continuous analysis to see what our students are doing and where the improvement is occurring. They're, they're planning at all levels. They're planning at the district level, they're planning with auxiliary teams, they're planning at the building level, and with teachers. Research-based also matters too. Um, you have to make sure that there's backed in common practice that people appreciate and like. One of the reasons why you know we talked about Dufour being a breakthrough concept, it is research-based and it is a breakthrough concept. So those were pretty much the big ideas from uh, that I think are the takeaways from these. But you can see that the Fairfax model is a consistent district vision, but it also has some openings for autonomy as well. So it has to be clear that district leaders know what they're supposed to what they're supposed to be telling building principals at the building level. Um, the, they have to have practices that have been agreed upon um, where every building principal is doing certain things. These are maybe your more technical skills. Um, but the principals have to be able to lead as directed by central administration. So if there are major initiatives that needs to come from the district, it needs to be handed down and has to be an agreed upon practice as well that everybody agrees with, the principal understands, and the principal is making sure that is going on in the building. So the other big idea in this chapter is common language. Um, when you're doing professional learning community, um, you're going to see that there are common terms that should be used by everybody, um, should be used by everybody in the district. Um, there are 17 terms associated with professional learning communities. Let's take a look at these and you'll notice that you've seen these throughout this entire work that we've been doing with DeFore and even in Fulham. Um, we use the main idea what the professional learning community is. We've defined that. Um, we've talked about autonomy and teaming, um, a guaranteed and viable curriculum that is based off of the standards that have been set. What are the essential learnings? What are the big ideas? Um, all the different types of assessment that they're balanced, that there's a common assessment, which could be your benchmarks, your formative assessment. It's the assessment that takes place before. Um, in, it, it takes place before the final assessment and it's for you to gather some knowledge. Um, and the performance-based assessment, which is essentially the summative assessment. The notion of iterator reliability, getting perspectives from everybody, um, an appropriate time and place to do, in, to do intervention if there seems to be a problem with what's going on, smart, targeted, focused goals, um, an understanding of loose and tight culture where, the, where we still have the loose coupling where the teachers are allowed to explore on their own, but there's still a tight culture that they're sharing what's going on. Um, the big ideas related to professional learning communities, which are the big ideas of the PLC, the four critical questions that we've covered already, um, the notion of collective inquiry, everybody's working together to get the big ideas and to talk about them and discuss them, and then obviously the concept of action research while you're actually teaching and collecting data and seeing what the, stu what the students are learning and what the teachers are learning in their practice as well. So the superintendent has to be the one that develops the framework. I mean, that's, that's their goal. They have to give the vision. They have to support the training and send the principals where they need to be sent. Um, the principals have to be sent to off-site trainings in order to do professional learning communities and get the full, um, full perspective of it. They have to support their faculty and staff in order for it to work effectively. And if they don't, that's going to be a problem. I also believe that the principal doesn't just have to go to these trainings. A reading coach wants to go, a curriculum specialist, a great team leader, and you can afford to pay for them to go to a PLC, that's not a bad idea as well. So Dufour talks about implementing PLCs in a three-year plan. You know for me that a lot of my conversation is on having your one-year, three-year, five-year, ten-year plan. Basically what that means is the principals tries to look at data, they speculate on where it's going, what it's supposed to look like. Um, you get three years of previous data to project where it is right now, but there should be somewhat of an improvement and somewhat of a gain. Um, and it should be collective among the teaching groups and it should be building specific as well, but it should still meet the district need also. So this is a big idea. If you're going to start one thing from this lecture, this was my big takeaway. It's this notion that the superintendent um, 
has to limit what's going on in the building because they have to make sure that there's not too much stuff going on. Um, professional learning communities are huge. Um, you are PLCs, you don't just do PLCs, but the whole implementing and teaching people how to do professional learning communities is something new for a lot of people. So having that built into the system is, is a big idea, um, but you also want to make sure that there's not other initiatives a new teacher evaluation system, um, new standards set by the state or the federal government that's taking over and taking care of the professional learning communities as well. Um, that can be part of it, but if you're trying to learn how to do these in your building, I would not advise about it. Remember what we said in the beginning of this course, sometimes there's nothing wrong with taking a year, sitting back, and letting the teachers teach. Um, professional learning communities let you do that once you get the training done. So, I really think you should, you should look at the central administrator objectives that are on pages 43 to 45. I'm not going to list them, I'm not going to insult your intelligence, but these are the big ideas, these are the things that need to be kept in mind so that everybody in the district is on the same page and that the messages are conveyed consistently. Remember, as central administrators, you are the people that are telling the principals what has to be done in their building and you're making sure that there's a consistent message. So, the next chapter looks at the 19 responsibilities that principals have in leading a professional learning community. Um, I'm going to present each one of them to you and then we'll discuss them, uh, and, we'll discuss them um, and I think this should give you a good overview of uh, what we're looking for in professional learning communities. Thank you.